maximum sustainable yield. If you've previously paid attention to fishing activities, sustainable fisheries, marine conservation, there's a good chance you may have heard that term come up before. But what does it mean? Why is it relevant? Let's talk about it. Okay, so let's start by drawing some graphs. First, let's pick a fish species. Like the Atlantic Cod, which you likely had before if you live in New England. If we plot the abundance of a cod population over time, it's going to start low and then increase over time until it eventually reaches equilibrium. That is known as the carrying capacity, or K. Think about it as a basket of fish. The basket can only fit so many fish before they start spilling over and are not able to be kept inside said basket. But the part that interests us is this one. See how steep that curve is in that middle section? When the cod population is very low, there are not that many individuals reproducing, which means less babies being produced. So the population grows slowly. When the cod population nears its environment's carrying capacity, there are a lot of cods around, which means there might not be enough food for more cods to be added to the population. Or maybe they become an easier target for their predators. This leads to the mortality rate to become equal to the survival rate and the population size to stabilize. But here, there's enough cots for birth rates to ramp up and enough room for growth in the environment for survival rates to remain higher than mortality, leading to a peak in growth rate. Now, remember your derivatives from calculus class? Don't worry, I didn't trick you into watching a math video. Derivatives are simply useful to plot the slope of a curve. To plot the growth rate as it changes with the population, we're basically going to take the derivative, or the slope, of the population size over time. At first it will be low, but it will rapidly increase, reaching its peak at that critical middle area, before it starts decreasing again until it reaches carrying capacity. So now we have this nice parabola curve that shows different growth rates of our cod population at different population sizes. But most importantly, it shows us how much cod we can take if we do not want to change the population size. For instance, if the population is this size, we know it will grow about this much in one year. So we can fish that amount of fish without changing the population. If we fish below the curve, the next year the population will have increased in size. We would say that the population is underexploited or underfished. If we fish above the curve, the population will have decreased by next year the population would be considered overexploited or overfished. This peak is our maximum sustainable yield, or MSY. It shows the population size that allows us to remove the maximum amount of fish without reducing the population's size. Fishing at this point means that the population is fully exploited or maximally sustainably fished. In fisheries, we usually refer to populations as stocks and fishing fleets will be subject to fishing quotas and other forms of regulations to ensure that fishing is sustainable. MSY is not the only metric used to set fishing quotas, but it is useful to see how much fishers can remove from a stock before causing declines. And unfortunately, declines have happened. Our Atlantic cod right here, the Grand Banks stocks of Nova Scotia saw dramatic declines over the last half century. In this graph you can see there is a peak before a precipitous decline in catches. That was due to the modernization of our fishing fleet and the development of larger boats equipped with better navigation systems as well as sonars that make it easier to find fish. And while our technology got significantly better at finding and catching fish, it's not like Atlantic Cod have started developing like anti-fishing technologies of their own to like counteract our technological advances. Yet. So the fishing fleets were able to catch more fish, but also were likely fishing about that critical parabola curve. You can see similar trends in other fisheries around the world, like the southern bluefin tuna, the Japanese pilchard, or the Chilean jack mackerel. Rapid increases in catches followed by steep declines. But conservation and management efforts can have the opposite effect. Take compact whales. Recent studies have shown that after the dramatic decline in whale stocks caused by commercial whaling, the current stocks are believed to have recovered to their pre-industrial levels thanks to an international agreement to ban commercial whaling, also known as a moratorium. Now, some countries still carry out commercial whaling, but the amount of whales removed does not seem to have affected significantly the ability of humpback whales to regrow their population. And that is likely because they were hunted below that critical parabola curve. Now, moratoriums are definitely effective since they stop all fishing, 
but they're not very desirable. Shutting down a fishery completely carries a lot of negatives. Fishers lose their job, coastal economies lose an important stream of money coming from the fishery, consumers are no longer able to eat their favorite seafood, and politicians will often face a backlash from disgruntled constituents. So instead, it is better to regrow a fishery by fishing below that parabola curve and eventually attain that maximal sustainable yield. This has been done successfully with the Northwest Atlantic Sea Scallop, the Atlantic Swordfish, and the Pacific Groundfish Fishery, which includes several species including the Boccaccio, the Dark Blotch Rockfish, and the Pacific Ocean Perch. Now, this may all seem fairly straightforward, but there's a little something that makes it a bit more complicated. Ecosystems are dynamic, and both environmental and anthropogenic factors will cause variations in the carrying capacity. This means that this value over here will keep shifting, increasing and decreasing over time and causing changes in maximal sustainable yield. For instance, take a species of small fish like the European pilcher that feeds on plankton. The carrying capacity of its stock will vary depending on plankton availability and the size and timing of large planktonic blooms. Basically, when a lot of tiny marine plants start multiplying like there's no tomorrow. Years with a lot of plankton available may mean the carrying capacity will increase because there is more food to accommodate more pilchards. And years with low plankton availability will cause the carrying capacity to be lower. Additionally, the European hake is a known predator of the European pilchard, and so its carrying capacity will be connected to the availability of pilchards. More pilchards available for the hake to hunt may mean that the carrying capacity will increase and less pilchards will mean less food available and thus a lower carrying capacity for hake. This works the other way around too. Less hake around may cause the carrying capacity of pilchards to increase since they are not removing that many fish from the environment, or a greater hake stock may cause the pilchard carrying capacity to decrease due to the increased mortality rates. In reality, this gets even more complicated since hake don't feed exclusively on pilchards. Adult hakes will also target species like European sprat, European anchovy, Atlantic mackerel, horse mackerel, and even juvenile European hake. It's a big fish eat small fish world. The juvenile hakes on the other hand will feed mainly on small crustaceans, and thus may not be affected by the same factors that influence the adults' food sources. Predation can also have benefits for prey populations and cause carrying capacities to increase since predators will usually target weak or diseased individuals they will limit the spread of disease and sometimes make the stock population healthier as i said before things get pretty complicated when you account for all the factors that make an ecosystem dynamic and i will not be able to go over everything in this video those are topics for future videos but we have an impact as well we act as predators removing both hakes and pilchards from the water surrounding europe even if we set sustainable quotas and are fishing below or at the maximum sustainable yield for hake, if we are fishing too many pilchards, there will be less food available for the hake stock, and the carrying capacity and subsequent maximum sustainable yield will change, potentially below the current fishing quotas. Additionally, fish stocks often require specific habitats to remain available for them to grow and find shelter from their own predators, such as nurseries. These can take the form of coral reefs, mangroves, or ponds of slow-moving water in upstream rivers, where young fish can safely grow. But we can destroy these habitats by converting water streams into channels, expanding coastal infrastructure over mangrove habitats, or through anthropogenic climate change which can cause coral bleaching and ocean acidification, which will ultimately have consequences on our fish stock scaring capacities and how much we will be able to take while remaining at or below our maximum sustainable yield. The state of those critical habitats will heavily influence the survival rates of young fish, which will have consequences on our stock's carrying capacities, and ultimately how much we can fish by remaining at or below the maximum sustainable yield. So as you can see, that MSY thing is a pretty important metric when it comes to sustainable fishing and ensuring that fish stocks remain healthy and plentiful over time. But as I mentioned before, there is so much more that goes into today's fishery science, and I will expand on those topics in future videos. But until then, I hope that now when you hear about maximum sustainable yield, you'll know exactly what they're talking about, and you'll know how this topic relates to our ocean's resources. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. 
If you have any feedback or questions about maximum sustainable yield, or if you have any requests or suggestions about what the next video should be about, feel free to leave a comment. Finally, if you want to learn more about fun facts on individual species that we share our land and sea with, you can follow me on Instagram at VictorSeeItAll.